Good morning po. Uh, kanina habang nagpa-present si Sir Jerry, naisip ko kasi, uh, early this year, my students from Mabua presented a study on science and science. Pero para siyang suntok sa buwari kasi may kili yung panahon namin para magawa yung study na yun. We're trying to to start paano i-historicize yung science journalism sa Pilipinas. Pero mahirap pala siya at mahirap pala nang gawin. Kahit po ang class ka rin pa, mahirap pala siya kami. Um, graduate po ako dito sa UP Journalism no 2010. And kanina na sinabi ni Sir na wala sa curriculum halos yung science communication. I came from a J school and by far the best J school in the Philippines. But we do not have science communication or science journalism as a subject, even as an elective. And I do not blame the, the department. I love my department. At kahit na, uh, tapos nung nag-graduate school naman ako sa Ateneo, dun sa brochure merong science communication, may science journalism. But when I ask if this will be offered, walang magtuturo. So, it's also a problem of wala rin mentors yung mga science journalists. Pero nasan ba sila? Do we have science journalists in the Philippines? In fact, we do. There's a Philippine Science Journalism Association, Incorporated. There's a Philippine Network of Environmental Journalists. Sa pagkakalap ko, member ako nila, pero I'm not that active. Kasi karamihan sa kanila, mga lolo lolo lang na, or kinulat na. Wala, pag nag-usap-usap kami sa coverage, parang ang kaya ko lang sabi, kumusta na po yung abo nyo? <laughs> so, nahihirapan din ako, but I mean, they're great teachers. Uh, I've learned a lot from them. Sa kanila din ako humingi na advice, kasi hanggang ay wala pa rin akong thesis. So, hindi ko matapos-tapos yung MA ko. And then, parang parang yung realizations eh. Lagi ko sila, um, when I graduated in 2010, gusto ko sana maging investigative journalist. Tapos, na-try ko naman yun, na makapag-investigative journalism ako for TV. But then again, nung nakita ko, parang as time goes by, isip ko, ang kami na gumagawa ng watchdog journalism sa Pilipinas. Ano ba yung hindi nagagawa? And I've always wanted to be a scientist. Yun nga lang, natawa kong mag-apply sa BSP since kala ko, saan ko po ta course eh. So, sabi ko, masko, na-realize ko mas katas pala ko sa journalism. So, sabi ni Sir Araw, nung pumasok ako ng freshman, sabi ko, 70 lang ko yung tinatagot sa journalism sa dilemma. So, kung pati ko niya ako, kung sila ang pasok ako. So, ayun, inisip ko, paano ko pagsasangahin yung dalawang gusto na hindi ko kakailanganin mag-take ng isang mahabang na subjects ng tatlong series pa, etc. Hindi na kakaya din ang tumatanda kong utak yun. So, Gusto ko ng science, gusto ko pa rin ng journalism. So what I try to do is to write about science na lang. And I think it's by far the best career decision I've ever made. Um, from 2012, nang trabaho pa si Mang Tani sa GMA, I've been writing about science. And dalawa yung malaki kong laging challenge eh. Una, Kung si Aling Barang sa, sa television, si Aling Barang at saka si Mang Ambo yung makikinig sa akin or manonood nung, nung segment na ginagawa ko, paano nila maiintindihan? Pangalawa, kung online naman, pag gusto lang ako online, paano ko masisiguro na yung readers, pag click doon sa page ko, hindi sila aalis? But at the same time, paano ko papaunawa sa kanila yung quantum mechanics, quantum physics, storm search among others. And it's always hard to debate with your editors and the program managers na what you're doing is important and relevant. I had debates with program managers kasi hindi na ikusod pagpunta dun sa pag-ere sa 24 hours or sa state of the nation yung story ang pinagawa ko. I used to hate my editors because of that. Kasi inisip nila, mas mahalaga yung politics eh. Mas benta. Laging hindi daw bumabenta yung science. Pero paano siya gagawin mabenta? Hindi naman yung problema lang ng writer eh. Problema din siya ng editor. Paano siya gagawin mabenta? Kailangan, kilala mo yung audience mo. Lagi naman gumagawa ng survey ng mga media outlets na to para makilala kung sino yung audience nila. Demographics, ano yung gusto. But the thing is, 
partly cultural yung problema. Sa education system natin, hindi nabibigyan ng focus ang science. Pag yung bata pumasok sa school, gusto niya maging doktor, yes? Kasi yung unang nakita, doktor, teacher, and we always love science. Pero pag din ang high school, general science, biology, chemistry, and physics, magkaksunod yun. At ilagi natin iniisip na yun yung mahirap na subject, lalo na pagdating na meron ng math. Takot tayo sa math. So ang tendency, mawala yung pagkagusto sa science, kahit nung una, gusto natin sila. So pagdating ng college, magde-decide ngayon yung magulang sa kayong anak, ano yung kursong kukunin ko? So kung ano yung mabentang kurso? Ano yung malaking kita? Paano ko makapasok ng one center na mabilis? Usually, ganun yung iniisip ng magulang. Ang tendency, dahil nagigit, namawala sa culture or dun sa isip natin na science is important, pati nung pag tumatanda na, pagdating sa public, pati yung pag-digest natin ng information, iniisip natin na hindi na importante yung science. So, nasa sidetrack na siya. Lagi kong iniisip na, uh, pwede mo namang hindi i-label na science eh. Kasi ang, sa mga newspapers, when you look at newspapers and even websites, halos wala namang science session. Walang science and health session, science education. Lagi naka-invent ko sa iba't iba. Bibihira yung may science session. But the thing is, pag pinasok mo yan sa main news, and you frame it like any other political news, it will still be read and it's, it will still sell. And, Uh, lagi nang sinasabi pagka gumagawa ko ng balita or ng story, you have to make it simple but not simpler. Meron kasing assumption sa media na parang you have to dump down the science to be able to be digested by the public. But that, that, that's not true. Kasi matalino naman yung mga Pilipino. Naiintindihan naman yan yung ulan. Although, halimbawa, yung hangin, which is, I think, Uh, isa sa mga paborito kong terms. Yung hangin kasi, pag tinansay ko siya sa English, marami. Yung air hangin, yung breeze hangin, wind hangin, southwest monsoon hangin, habaga. Di ba? Lahat yung hangin. Kung yung scientific terms na ginagamit natin for reporting disasters, hindi siya matatranslate into Filipino or into direct translation ng Tagalog, pwede naman ang gumamit ng visual cues. Sa pag-asa, yung warning, typhoon warning, meron nakalagay doon. Um, roots of trees will be uprooted, parang ang etc. Kasi, essentially, people think in images. People do not think in words. So, even if we replace storm surge with tsunami to be able to warn the public better, it would be useless kung hindi lang nalang picture gano'ng kataas ba yung wind na darating. 2 meters. Ano ba yung alam natin 2 meters? Hindi naman tayo gano'ng mag-measure eh. Pag sabi yung 2 meters, sabi isang story ba yun, dalawang story ba yun ng bahay, dalawang palapat, gano'n. So, I mean, and there are efforts to do that sa media side. Pero, the thing is, kulang kami sa manpower. Not everyone in the media loves science then. Kasi saan ba sila mabibigyan ng, I mean, saan ba sila mabibigyan ng atensyon? Saan ba magkakaroon ng may papalabas yung story nila? Malabang kung hindi science. Pero, ako, I mean, sabi ko science journalist ako, pero come to think of it, I'm probably a science, more of a science communicator than a journalist. Kasi ano kayo ko ng science. Pero, with hope, well, at least I'm trying to do this, start to do this, even at a younger age, to invite and to encourage people, youth, na nasa edad ko or mas bata sa akin na this is important, science is important. You have to read science and you have to learn science. Ganon. Isa pa, yung yung sinasabi yung simplified language but not the content. Lagi kasi pagka kumakausap ko na scientist, lagi kong tinakalong um, sir kasi ako hindi ako scientist. So, kahit naintindihan ko kayo, baka mahirapan ako ipaliwala nito sa iba. So, paano siya explain? Di ba ako sa natin? So, lagi namang, lagi ganun yung struggle, pero <coughs> nandun, yung, nandun din yung sa journalistic. I've attended several 
Global Climate Change Reporting Workshop lately, uh, hosted by, by different organizations then. And there are efforts. The thing is, siguro hindi natin nakikita yung effort sa national media. I've seen people from the community press work hard on translating this information para sa public. And that is effective kasi community press nila, mas pinaniniwalaan sila sa lugar nila. So, hindi ko nakikita, actually, bihira kong makakita ng galing sa national press or national media na umakasin sa ganun. And probably, we have to also invite the editors and program managers into that kind of education. Kasi sila yung nagde-decide eh. Even if the reporters know what they're doing, if the editors don't think that this science is important or they don't understand the science or the concept behind the science, probably walang mangyayari. Hindi rin mapapublish ang balita, hindi rin rin siya mapapulita ng edit. So, ayun. And thank you for inviting me here. I love this kind of...